on the collaborative side of things, Microsoft Teams is just used so prevalently out there. You know, most corporations out there today are Microsoft shops. And at, a, at its base, people use Microsoft Teams for, you know, chats and uh, IM uh, capabilities within that. And so just we can stay uh, in touch with each other, both internal and external to our organizations. Meetings, you know, we all use Teams in some regard for meetings and, and uh, uh, be able to collaborate with, with and without video and be able to display things and help mitigate that separation that we have by this remote and hybrid work that we have these days. And then calling features that allow us to just hit the phone icon and basically call somebody within our organization or somebody outside our organization if we're allowed to uh, uh, just immediately without having to, to go to our phones. And then there's the whole thing of content management. You know, the keeping of the files in, uh, in different teams and channels and different uh, ways that we categorize things allows us to maintain this content in a way that makes sense. Um, and also the apps and the workflows. There's some, you know, simple capabilities with approvals uh, app within Teams itself that allows us to do approval processes within these things. Uh, and also more advanced things you can do with workflows in Power Automate uh, at Microsoft as well. So these things all come together, and if we layer in the whole idea of projects and work and bring that into the context of teams, we can leverage those aspects in the context of all the previous capabilities that you see up there. So the idea is to make this a comprehensive hub for teamwork. Now, there's many apps in teams for managing work, right? If you go out there and look at apps, you'll find a bunch of project management, task management apps, et cetera. It's, it's, it's almost mind boggling, but the reality is, different people are using different things. And that whole thing of data management uh, that we said earlier on is real and it creates silos and pockets of information within our organization. Now, what we're going to focus on today is uh, the advent of Planner and Planner Premium, formerly Project for the Web, and OnePlan, because OnePlan is an available option as an authorized Microsoft Teams application. Now, Planner Premium, formerly Project for the Web, right, allows you in Teams to add a project plan into any team within Microsoft Teams, for example. And, you know, you may just use it as a repository of project plan content. And on the back end, because it is built on the Power Platform, uh, you might have any number of plans that you're uh, putting together individually. And they're all being stored, this new planner premium, which Project for the Web is now being called, is being stored in a repository called Dataverse on the back end. Now, if you're just using Project for the Web, it's by default going to Dataverse where it's data source. So you're not saving these things to files like we used to do with Microsoft Project Professional. And then that data is now available for us to do common reporting. So for example, there's some roll up uh, of the different projects that you're working on in your portfolio, maybe a timeline view, and then like lists of tasks that individual people are working on, et cetera. But at this point, it really is about basic collaborative project and work management, but not really the advanced features of time phase data on things like resource capacity planning and financials, et cetera, and some of the other things we're gonna talk about later on. But for the needs of the folks that are just basically looking to collaborate on schedules, uh, et cetera, and work, um, this is a, uh, uh, an advancement of what Microsoft is offering. 